Welcome everyone, Reimagined Innovation Series. I've got Benny Liu here from Australia Post and we are just having an informal chat. You know, I've invited Benny to the show uh, very much, you know, with, with the context to, you know, try and offer some inspiration at this time. Other leaders in, you know, in business, particularly in the innovation space, those, you know, marketers that are kind of, you know, having trouble getting out of their own heads or, um, um, you know, to my point from Josephine to our first guest, trying to think about growth in turn, instead of just survival. Um, because in doing so, in reframing um, what's happening right now, there is the possibility to think about opportunities and not just, um, you know, waiting to see when COVID's over. Um, because I don't think that this is, uh, I think there's something we need to adapt to. And, um, and I'm, I'm here to hear, get your opinion. Benny. So can we just start with what we just, you know, we were just talking about before this around, you know, your openness and your willingness to, you know, just talk to people that have been, you know, reaching out at the moment. Yes, definitely. So um, I find I'm finding that in the lockdown period, that more and more people are reaching out than usual. And I think it's important to respond when you get someone reaching out. Um, and especially when people haven't you haven't spoken to for quite a while who who reach out because they they've known you from say university or a past colleague and they're just uh, it's it's important for for us to stay connected and offer a word of uh, encouragement first and foremost and also if we can help in any way then it's important for us to um, to help each other out during this this difficult time absolutely. And so a few random, few, few random notes at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all, it's all in good spirit. I mean, it's uh, good to connect with people that you haven't spoken to for a while. It's good to catch up on what they're going through at the moment, what, uh, what they've been doing so far and what they want to do um, going forward. And so uh, this is a great time for, for people to think about how they can position themselves for the future because things are changing. And there's, there's a lot of opportunity out there. So if you can put yourself in the, the shoes of um, a lot of companies uh, and what they're going through, you can, you can start to use your imagination about how the world will look like in a year's time or two years' time, and you can start to reposition yourself from here. Absolutely. And what, what was kind of like, you know, the personal journey, you know, you've, you've, you've been through or like the process that you've done to kind of, get to that point you know i, I when i was talking with um josephine uh, our first guest it was the concept of buka which was like volatility uncertainty and you know um and all the stuff that's kind of going on in the world and that almost being a process where we kind of have to um you know understand or deal with it then we can get the kind of um you know back on track to try and um innovate yeah so I do a lot of reading, like uh, like most of the the um, well, I try to follow in the footsteps of successful people. So um, when I'm when I'm looking at the situation of today, I look at the inspirational leaders who have done well for themselves uh, in the last 20, 30 years, and they they themselves do a lot of reading. So I try to follow in those footsteps. Um, when COVID hit us really hard back in February and March, the period, I started to look back in history and, and had a look at what happened to the world um, in the GFC time, in the tech bubble burst, and those big milestones in our, in our economy, and had a look at what happened and what happened during that period and what happened after that period. So, and I said to myself, look, it, the, world, the world doesn't stop it just pivots. So I said to myself in today's environment, it's never going to stop. It's just going to work differently. Different industries will, will uh, suffer, but some industries will thrive. So how do we reposition ourselves to be part of that thriving industry in, in a, in a positive way? Absolutely. And then does that, um, were there some learnings that you could share? I'm just, just, just personally interested, um, hoping the audience is too, of like, um, you know, looking back as to how you kind of, um, 
injected that in 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 the philosophy moving forward? Yeah, so I'll speak to my current workplace being Australia Post. So, um, rightly or wrongly, we have been a beneficiary of this um, pandemic, seeing that uh, e-commerce is booming um, because just because it, no one can go out and stores are closed. So, um, how 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 I'm looking at the the industries at the moment is that. Um, you, you, you ask yourself, what do you, what do you change in your life today to meet the demands of uh, your daily essentials and, and also your recreational needs? So uh, it's, it's, about, it's about thinking about uh, yourself first and foremost, being the customer, and then, and then having a look at um, the trends of the, the, the companies who are advertising a lot about what they're doing and and finding a position for yourself to, to say hey look i could probably look into that area and start to imagine uh, new possibilities for myself and does that then become like a um, for lack of a better term war cry for your team like do you um is it um well first i think it's how do you get your, your team out of a you know a, a terrible headspace if it goes that way or or thinking about the new normal, how are you kind of taking the learnings and then and using it as a, like a, um, a way to positively transform? Yeah, I always like to talk about the good and the bad. So, you know, the, the age old question, would you like the good news or the bad news first, right? <laughs> yeah. You gotta have, you gotta have both sides, but I think that what's important is to um, emphasize on the good and how much more potential you could uh, extract out of the good if you concentrate on that aspect rather than the bad. So it's human. Unfortunately, it's human nature to to really um, sink into the bad. But um, I always encourage people to look at how much growth opportunity there is in the good. So that's it's endless possibility in the good side of things. But the bad it can only get as bad as what it is it can never grow exponentially unless if you let it get to that stage absolutely great point and does that does that impact your your innovation strategy internally yeah so our innovation strategy today has pivoted quite a bit from uh, pre-lockdown um, we're concentrating a lot on the home side of things so seeing that the trend of today seems to be that more people are getting more comfortable staying at home, getting things delivered to home, um, having the, the lifestyle changes that, that's uh, being influenced by um, working from home. Therefore, we are really looking at opportunities in how we can make that process easier for, for the end customer and also for the merchants who facilitate the um, the the products going through our network and uh you know does that does that kind of um does that does that take you on a journey to say uh new products new services what comes to mind is uh the concept of these kind of home lockers or whatever for example mm -hmm. where, you know the where, where did how far does it go with you guys you know, like, well i guess for us we we are accelerating a lot of our um, initial thoughts around e-commerce at the moment. So for, for things that were on the back burner previously that um, we bubbled away slowly, we are now putting more emphasis and turning that around to being more of a focus point now because yeah. just because of the acceleration. So we're, we're kind of switching our focuses to, to ensure that we're um, making things easier and and more effective for the areas of folk, well areas of growth at the moment. Absolutely. And then did just you know um, what I what I've found you know um, I guess one of the benefits of COVID, if you if you can say that, um, is that um, it seemed to kind of um, accelerate bad business models 
as well as it did good business models. Mm. Would you agree in that like people that were perhaps um, on a slow decline, this is kind of accelerated um, and not to the point that hopefully they're going to, you know, it, it may be just the fact, not that they're going to go out of business, but more that people had to think about um, pivoting or changing their, you know, their strategy a lot sooner, which could have been, which can be a benefit, right? Yes, yes. I think that in in any of the pandemics that, or uh, global crises that we've experienced previously, the weak links really crack open, um, but the strong get even stronger. Um, like they say, the rich get richer and poor get poorer. Um, I think it's important to for those who have weak links in this time, really take the chance to, to slow down and reposition how they do things um, to ensure that they've survived through this, this pandemic. Uh, for those who are doing really well, they could probably take a chance of this pivotal change to see how they could also expand in di different areas. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just be mindful that I don't want to go too far down, like, um, you know, um, sad stories. Um, but yeah. um, is there, what's been like, um, you know, inspiring to you at this time, you know, given everything that's been happening? Um, inspirational. Well, I'm, I'm giving you tough questions today, man. <laughs> keep, don't keep coming. You're not making it easy. But... No, no. <laughs> I think what's inspirational today are those who have really um, uh, looked to the future pre-lockdown and seen what the world should look like. So the, the, world, the world was always heading into the world of um, digital and online. And those who, who took a step to making that happen for their business pre-lockdown are really benefiting today. So the likes of Kogan, um, the likes of the payment companies who help reduce friction of the online experience have really um, exploded today. Um, and those, those type of business, businesses who, you know, took a gamble when they didn't know that how fast this industry can grow previously, but believed in themselves have really um, started to inspire everyone by saying that, Yes, if you believe in the future outlook of what you think the world would look like in five, ten years from today, um, make that happen today so that you can take the benefits tomorrow. Absolutely. And was there any kind of surprising or um, you know unexpected, but you know um, uh, still you know inspiring um, companies or you know things that you have seen uh, during COVID? Like, you know, great pivots, you know, or, um, or the like, you know? Yeah. So I think we, we at Australia Post are always looking for sus sustainability uh, projects to really get into. Um, I think that com e commerce in general and, um, well, commerce in general have really looked at the sustainability part of their business being either packaging or reducing carbon footprint. I think that there are some really good companies out there at the moment doing great things, reducing the, uh, the carbon footprints of their logistics supply chains to sustainable packaging uh, type of products. They're really um, inspiring to know that those companies will be able to accelerate their momentum and getting that to market because just because people are more conscious about the waste that they're producing at the moment, they're always at home. I know for myself, I see how much rubbish that gets built up through the day because it's all consolidated in one place. I can see it. So definitely for myself personally, I think that if I see two companies, one being a sustainable company using sustainable packaging versus one that doesn't, I'll be shopping more with, the sustainable company. Absolutely. I, I think it reminded me of the, um, a meme where mm. uh, it said, I used to, 
I used to tell, I used to have all these alcohol bottles out near the bin and used to tell the garbage man, Hey, look, I had a party. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> now I yeah. tell him that I'm an alcoholic and I didn't have a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, so yeah, that's really great point on the sustainable bit and, um, you know, excess packaging that we, we couldn't, we, we shouldn't be using and these kind of, um, um, you move to the, uh, away from plastics or something that's biodegradable, et cetera. That's fantastic. And then in terms of like, you know, as much as you're, you know, uh, you know, can share, happy to share, how, do, how does, how do you kind of experiment with, with, you know, new products and new services, um, at Australia post. And I know, you know, I want to get into your, you know, uh, specific IP or whatever, if I'm, if I'm crossing the line, but just, just curious, how do you kind of validate um, some of the projects you're working on? Yeah, we, we, we in the innovations team have um, uh, a pretty rigorous process in looking at validating and, and accelerating ideas through our innovation funnels. So um, we do rapid, rapid tests, rapid ideation sessions um, and we come up with ideas that we think that would fit strategically to our goals and would resonate well in the market. Um, we often do want to take on opportunities that have a substantial market size. So uh, we do test and validate the opportunity quite rigorously. And we obviously have our own metrics that we've developed internally to, to test these. Um, we, like most innovation labs, go through an accelerations phase where we um, test the, the feasibility, desirability, and, and viability of the, the opportunity. We put it through some, um, our framework, and if it uh, matches up with, with what we expect it to, to come up with, then we go into the MVP stage and develop the prototype to go to market. Yeah, I love it. I love hearing you know, big companies like Australia Post talking about MVPs. Um, and yeah. and then um, yeah, and then is there? Um, oh, I can't remember where I was going to go with that. Um, look, um, and then what? What is? Um, are there? Oh, sorry. So yeah, when you're going back to um, just you know you, you're the, the personas you had and the customer journeys that you had. I mean, does that like do you kind of you know, scrap, um, given COVID, right? Does that go, do you have to go back to the drawing board on, on the, you know, the customer journey kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, pre COVID, it was a lot easier to, um, to come up with a customer journey and through customer interviews. Uh, today it's a very much, um, still in planning phase around how we do this since we aren't able to, to meet as many new people as easily as previously. But I think that a lot of the journey mapping that we've previously done, uh, we'll have to get updated slightly around what's happening today. But I think that it, it's not irrelevant anymore. It's still quite relevant to, to, to what we are experiencing. So uh, today, there might be some some nuances that change in in how customers behave or interact with uh, the online channels to physical channels, but uh, I think we can still take the learnings and apply that to to our developments, which often or not aren't short term development um, opportunities. They're more twelve to eighteen months type things. So we're looking at a world that would be hopefully eased on the restrictions. Yeah. Well, you're, you know, you're coming to coming to me from lockdown, like uh, myself in Melbourne, which is uh, certainly getting into, you know, weird territory, Groundhog mm -hmm. Day, Groundhog Day um, matrix kind of stuff. Um, and then, so I guess what I'd love to kind of end with is just, you know, parting advice to, to um, I guess, you know, heads of marketing, heads of innovation, um, that even just leaders, you know, you know, I, I started the, with the premise that, you know, I want to try and help people reimagine as per the, the name of the show. Um, 
what's just a couple of tips to, to end on to help um, leave on a positive note? Yeah, definitely. I think what, what helps me get through the day is really have an open mind. Um, be open to any ideas, even if they seem crazy before, they're not, they're probably not so crazy anymore today. So being, being open to um, how fast the world is moving and, and when something, if you read something interesting, do delve into it and find out more about it. Like three months ago, no one knew what Zoom was, but now everyone's on Zoom. Um, I read about Zoom about a year ago and I thought it was great, but I didn't really have much of a use for it, but uh, I did read up on it. And today everyone is, you know, an expert at using Zoom. So if, if you can catch on to trends early, then you can be a trend leader rather than a, uh, rather than a follower. So keeping an open mind really helps with um, being part of the future community. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Benny. Um, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time and, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully everyone at home got something valuable out of that. I'm sure I did. And um, catch you next time. Cheers. Thanks, Chris.